2021 Mercedes AMG E63 Wagon Review, Fast Lane for 5. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. With all the doom and gloom regarding the current state of the station wagon in the US, there is some good news. American buyers at least have three fast wagons at their disposal in 2021, assuming they can afford any of them, the Audi RS6 Avon, the Porsche Panamera Turbo Sport Turismo, and the vehicle you see pictured here, the Mercedes-AMG E63 S wagon. And each one of these wonderful long roofs is very good in its own way. The E63 S in particular blends German luxury and technology with AMG grunt, creating a sizable package that's impossible to ignore. And with modest updates for the 2021 model year that extend throughout the E-Class range, there are few arguments against the 603 horsepower AMG in the search for your next fast family hauler. You're probably in one of two camps, either you love the look of the E63 as a devotee of the niche but ferocious group of wagon fanatics or you hate it, associating the term station wagon with something your elderly grandfather might drive. We're not total wagon zealots like some, but we certainly lean toward the former, particularly when it comes to this exact car. Our $140,000 E63 wears a ridiculously cool design o matte blue paint job, matte black 20-inch wheels, carbon fiber accents, a blacked-out grille, and carbon ceramic stoppers with bold copper calipers. It's a gorgeously styled station wagon. Those AMG-specific appointments join a lightly revised fascia that spans the entire E-Class range for the 2021 model year. The new front end consists of updated headlights, a sharper grille, inspired in part by the GT Coupe, and slightly larger vent openings. The new features are minor, but they do help improve the overall look compared to last year. The interior of the E63 wagon is, expectedly, very familiar and very stunning. It looks and feels like almost every other Mercedes in the current lineup, which is a good thing. High-quality Napa leather and Alcantara, standard on this model, drape the seats and steering wheel, while sublime yellow accent stitching coats the dash and door panels and a beautiful black Dynamica headliner, $1,600, covers the roof. Even with low-profile tires and a raucous V8, the E63 S is a sublime cruiser when it needs to be. In comfort mode, the fast wagon putts along with nary a care. The highly adaptive Mercedes suspension is so well damped in this setting that it easily shrugs off bumps and imperfections, creating a cloud-like ride. The steering is relatively light in this mode, too, which makes the large machine pretty easy to maneuver. And above all, the E63 is whisper quiet on the inside. As with most modern Mercedes products, insulation and sound deadening on the E63 are unsurpassed, especially with the optional acoustic comfort package. The $1,100 option adds improved heat and noise insulation and infrared reflecting laminated glass. Passenger and cargo space is another positive point for the E63 wagon, there's just so much room. The front cabin affords the driver 37.5 inches of headroom and 41.7 inches of legroom, which is on par with the RS6 Avant's 38.3 inches and 41.3 inches of front head and legroom. Passengers in the rear of the E63 wagon also get a solid 38.2 inches of headroom thanks to the raised roof, which is again close to the RS6 Avant, 39.5 inches. Bottom line, even taller humans will be comfortable in the second row over long distances. But if you're buying a wagon over an E63 sedan, cargo space is what you're most likely after. And the E63 has plenty of it, there are 35.0 cubic feet behind the second row and 64.0 cubes with that second row folded. The RS6 only has 30.0 cubic feet behind the second row, and with the rear seats folded, it offers 59.3 cubic feet. We've always had very positive things to say about the Mercedes-Benz MUX infotainment system. It offers great features like hey, Mercedes voice commands and augmented reality navigation, and is generally very easy to use. But Benz updated some of the hardware here, the steering wheel controls in particular, and it's somehow slightly worse. Mercedes removed the simple volume dial, haptic feedback buttons, and cruise control selector on the steering wheel and implemented a more convoluted button-less setup that consists of two piano black inserts with fully touch capacitive controls. As we noted in our first drive of the E53 sedan, the setup simply doesn't work as well as last year's version did. The cruise control layout on the left side of the steering wheel is especially confusing and difficult to use, it's unclear exactly which selection does what. And things like the swipe directional responses aren't well received.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.